Hello everyone, this is Victor Riesco uh, from TrendFriend and I wanted to do something different uh, this week and do a video update to change things around a little bit and get to see the, some charts, share some charts with you guys and uh, hopefully you'll find it useful and helpful. So last week I spoke about that um, the primary trend uh, model that I use was about to flip negative. Uh, we had already flipped to a negative short-term trend uh, back in late February, the 21st. And at the moment, everything seemed like the like a pullback uh, after the market had triggered a, a mirage, a, mir a mirage of buying signals. Uh, during January and everything technically seemed pretty bullish uh, but this uh, downtrend uh, started to morph into something um, bigger I would say from the beginning of the week prior uh, I would say the beginning of March and and then we we found out that all these problems and, and the sell-off behind the scenes we were having problems with the banking system and uh, well, actually, after last week, the primary trend became negative. We'll see more details in, the, uh, in charts uh, in just a few minutes. As I mentioned, the short term trend is negative since uh, February 21st. And the macro has been negative for quite a while. It is improving. It has, it has improved quite a bit uh, during the last two months I would say but but uh, still not a uh, out outside the nothing that would change the negative single maybe if it keeps improving in a couple more weeks uh, we might see it go to neutral and we'll see from there it's the recession that has, hasn't arrived uh, signal we would say that uh, but still not not exactly a positive uh, for the market right now and sentiment that was um, we reached the extreme bullishness and greed in late January and we triggered our sell signal uh, with all the current sell-off and risk-off environment, environment we have seen uh, sentiment has gone uh, quite, has come down quite a bit and it's actually right now at the neutral signal so let's let's look at the long-term trend let's look, let's look at some charts see what, what's going on so this is the chart that I, I share with you guys every week and it's the Nasdaq composite which is my my main <clears throat> um, uh, index to gauge the health of the market and uh, well as I was mentioning we, we triggered a, a long-term buy signal uh, in late January my model and many others others uh, we see here that this is the technical buy signal is when this uh, line is heading higher not here but it's below the in the bottom of the chart that means that it's a negative trend we triggered a positive trend back in late January we also saw a flip in the trend of new highs versus new lows here we see that uh, the trend flip you want to see in a healthy market that new highs are dominating new lows like we had here but if you see the chart right now once again we had a, a crossover where new lows are dominating uh, new highs new 52 week highs so it's not, that's not a positive and also we saw a pretty pretty strong deterioration of, of breath here in how many of the Nasdaq composite stocks um, are in a long-term uptrend we reached uh, 63 percent, 64 at at the peak of of the recent rally, but now we, we have dropped back to 38 uh, percent, substantially below 50 percent, and so we're back to um, all all in all, if we if we look at the the trend of uh, these indicators, we're back in a negative trend, primary downtrend. We only have. Um, the technical trend of, of the index itself positive 
and that that's well one positive but we have two negatives so we might have a whipsaw maybe the market can heal itself and if, if we start rallying from here and and get some stability with all all this banking crisis and and the the market you know stabilizes and we, we see more sectors rallying and recovering we'll probably see this this um this uh trend in new highs versus new lows and the uh, amount of nasdaq composite stocks in a primary uptrend flip positive again but for now uh we're back to negative it's a failed signal this is not something very common but you know there's no guarantees in trading and basically this says that we are in a in a main, mainly risk off environment it doesn't mean you you can trade trade uh, make trades going long but the odds um, the long-term odds are not favorable favorable for if you're looking for long-term position trading buy and hold and mostly ra rallies would be will be shorter uh, than the declines like like here once we we flipped negative last year of course you have you know big bounces big rallies but the some of the declines are larger than the rallies and that's but characterizes a, a downtrend so we flipped uh actually monday the with this sell up on monday we flipped back to a negative trend now going back to the short term trend let's go here so we've got um um here is the the percentage of industry groups that's actually in a short term uptrend right now we are 13.8 percent that's very low that's usually levels that uh, tend to coincide with um, uh, short term uh, oversold signals in, in the market um, so the most sectors right now are in a short term downtrend and but we're seeing uh, that actually the nasdaq uh, composite and the technology sector um, the the qqq the nasdaq 100 and um what else uh, let me see for a second uh, uh technology oh semiconductors they have been pretty strong during this um uh, this correction in the market is this, this downtrend and actually those sectors have triggered a short-term uptrend so those are the pockets of strength in the market right now and so if you're you know trading short term that's and going long that's probably where you have to focus if you're if you want to you know play a short-term down uptrend um, but most sectors right now are, are not looking they're not, not looking at good at all this um, they're pretty oversold, most of them, but um, they're in short-term downtrends. You know, China stocks. You know, we we can see the short-term downtrend signal triggered in early February, and they've been declining since. And they were supposedly like a new market leader sector. Um, China again. Commodities have really taken a hit after you know being uh, one of the strongest sectors uh, during the last year's bear market. Um, let's see what's what else. Uh, well, healthcare has been very weak for a long time. Here we see the short-term downtrend signal triggered back in December, and we see how healthcare has been deteriorating and actually trading below its 200-day moving average. So, what I, what I wanted to show you is that basically you you've got to respect the the trends in the market. You of course you can make trades here or there like when the market becomes too oversold, but generally, if you're trading against the trend, you're, you're gonna lose money. You're gonna be uh, going, you know, trying to swim against the current. So uh, basically what it show, shows us right now that the short-term trend in most sectors is negative, except for the few I, I showed you before. And of course, we can, we can have an oversold rally here. Uh, there's some news coming out this weekend, you know, more banks getting bailed out, Credit Suisse uh, getting 
purchased by UBS and being backed by the, the Swiss government. Um, so yeah, of course we can get good rallies, but in general, when you're against the, the trend of the market, being that the long-term or the short-term trend, it's gonna make it uh, much more difficult. Uh, after last week, uh, we saw some some bounces in 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 the market. Uh, actually, despite all the news, the the S and P five hundred and the Nasdaq uh, were positive, and we see that we see that in the short term momentum indicators here at, at the bottom of the of the of these panes that we see that the momentum short term momentum has bounced for or sold and it's uh, near it's 33 percent that if we get above this it means like momentum has is uh, it, we're coming out of oversold conditions and and the rally could prolong itself quite a bit more we'll see if this changes the short-term trend of the overall market but it means like the oversold rally could extend itself and you know after a uh a big rise in in bear power, which is basically the uh, amount of um, of short term amount of new highs or new lows. Here is the amount of new lows. Um, it reached a, a level that usually 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 signifies like that um, bears are are overextended and they need a rest, and we see the market bounce back from that. Still, the the when the red line is above the green line, that means bears still are in control overall, but they're getting a lot weaker. And if we see this cross, it means that bulls are coming back and they could extend this short-term oversold rally and or and maybe, well, let's see what happens, so maybe it can morph this back again into an overall short-term uptrend, which could might, we don't know, possibly be strong enough to get the long-term trend of the market positive again. Um, so also I, I mentioned last week uh, in the report in my Substack uh, uh, newsletter that uh, we were pretty oversold. We got to extremes and I want to show with you guys a way to measure that. That's pretty effective. And here is um, here's the chart of the S&P 500 and here it's the I'm gonna put a line here, 40%. 40%. Okay. So yeah, here's the line, 40%. And basically, what it's this is showing is the amount of industry groups that are below their, their prices below their lower Bollinger band. Um, if you're not familiar with Bollinger bands, uh, I'll show you just in a second to make it clear. So it's in the, a really popular indicator techni from technical analysis, and it basically has a the standard version of the Bollinger Band. It's just a simple 20-day moving average, and these bands that you he you see here are uh, from the average two standard deviations. So basically, when the market reaches here below the Bollinger Band, it means that it's it has moved from the vol volatility of the 20 day moving average, uh, reach two standard deviations of, or more, yeah, of volatility. And here we see in the upside, and it could be a, it can be a good um, spot for, for reversals when, when we, we cross these extremes. And here we see that um, over 40% of industry groups crossed the, their lower Bollinger Band, it means that selling was really panicky as everybody was selling everything uh, due to the news of, of the banking problems so and when we reach these extremes it's not normal to to see all these sectors dropping below their lower lower volume band it usually means that uh, panic that emotion has taken control of the market and once you know things i'm not saying things are good right now but things usually are not as bad as they seem or Things happen that that you know the risks that the market is seeing there are mitigated and and you know then we get opportunities for to trade a market rally for oversold conditions and usually the bottoms even 
the tradable bottoms that we got on during the last bear market we reached these extremes you see here reached over 40 percent over 40 percent here in october recently in uh, late december we reached the day we, we got uh the over the 40 percent here for example well there we basically we got a little consolidation and we, we kept lower obviously not all all of them are going to work but when you see these extremes you have to be in the lookout for the market to, to stage a, a powerful reversal and most times there's no guarantees in the stock market but most times you're going to see usually the, the end or near the end of, of the selling so I, I spoke about that in the last newsletter and well what what did we get Actually, we did get a bounce in most indices, uh, and actually the Nasdaq was up quite a bit, which was showing relative, relative strength. So that's regarding the short-term trend. Um, let's go and take a look at macro. Um, so here, let's go. So yeah, macro, uh, as I've been telling. Uh, for some few weeks have, has been improving we see that uh, from the lows we got in November uh, the weekly leading economic index has bounced quite a bit still below zero which would, would mean that economic growth uh, the leading indicators are signaling economic growth we are still in negative territory so it doesn't mean uh, that things are, are positive but we're seeing um, quite a recovery and actually the the trend of the 21 week moving average here uh, is starting to move higher so if this continues for a couple more weeks and, and the trend is pointing higher uh, it, it's a good signal it's a neutral signal and if we cross above um, zero with the with the leading um, indicators weekly economic index and that will be a positive signal so we've been declining for quite a while uh, and we've been in negative territory for, for quite a while since back in may but uh this is still a negative for the market but getting better mm -hmm. and sentiment sentiment so we got this um extreme greed signal back in late january which it's usually um a really effective signal uh, for a market reversal. We, we never know if it's going to be a really steep sell-off or maybe the market's just going to correct a little bit and then continue its following this trend. Uh, we got one here in, in August uh, when we had this, um, this peak in the market here, which was also a very effective signal. Uh, back then, it might have been a little bit easier to... To foresee that it will uh, start a new leg lower, since we're we were in a clearly still in a in a bear market and and the trend of all primary indicators was still very negative. It, it very it looked like a just a strong bear market rally. Here it was harder to predict what would happen, since you know most technical long term indicators had flipped positive. So you know what I was expecting. From that signal was probably you know a correction, uh, some consolidation, and then a continuation of the of the rally. That that failed in uh, last week. It was we saw failure in, in most indices and and most primary trend indicators flipped negative. So well, nothing's guaranteed. But uh, after the sell-off, you know sentiment dropped quite a bit, and actually we reached a neutral signal that's below 50 uh, above 90 is extreme greed below 50 it's neut or at 50 and below it's neutral and when we reach 20 or lower it's extreme extreme bearishness as we see here also it's, uh, in um in late september we reached extreme bearishness and that basically was near the bottom of the of the market which actually is uh, the current bottom so yeah, no. So sentiment is neutral. We don't know if it's gonna cycle all the way back down here. Maybe the market stabilizes here and starts to rally, and of course, new, uh, sentiment will get uh, 
more bullish again or if we if this you know if this continues down and we maybe we get down to these lows and undercut them probably the sentiment will will drop uh, to extreme uh, fear and that's uh, when you have to be in the lookout for for a strong reversal like even if the down if the trend the primary downtrend is is active uh, you can still uh, play uh, a, a rally, a bear market rally, when sentiment becomes extremely negative, and and you can make um, some good money short term trading. Uh, that that bounce from extreme bearishness. Um, so yeah, well, uh, this is my first video. Uh, I hope you liked it. <laughs> I hope you can understand my English, not my na native language, but I'm trying my best. Um, and yeah, well, I use TC2000. This is the software I use. Uh, I think it's a great software. Um, there's a link here in, in the in the channel that if you click here, you can use my uh, affiliate link and get a good discount. And uh, well, comments, ask questions. Uh, I'm happy to, um, to answer, to give you my feedback. And you can also follow me in Twitter. This is my Twitter global trader and I hope to you know be in contact with you and and well I wish you the best and good luck trading next week.